Hello, Salesforce Hana, Walters954 here with another Flow video. So in this video, we are following along in our Flow Fest series, and this is going to be our Flow Fest challenge number two. So if you've never heard of Flow Fest, Flow Fest is a challenge, a competition that is held uh, virtually in the Salesforce ecosystem where anybody can complete to uh, basically be the flow champion. So you do a set of challenges and if you complete all of those challenges the fastest with the correct answers, then you will be the flow champion or flow master. In honor of FlowFest version 2 kicking off soon, I am reviewing some of the FlowFest version 1 questions. Depending on what time you're watching this, a new version of FlowFest may be kicking off. So definitely check out the links in the description down below for the latest FlowFest that is actually out. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce in general, administration, development, flows, code, you name it, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that's what this is all about. So now let's jump into the flow. All right, let's take a look at our FlowFest V1 second challenge. So this is to find the closed one opportunity that has the lowest amount, the lowest amount. If you all are following along with our first challenge, then you know that we wanted to find the opportunity with the highest amount before. So these are definitely building on top of each other's and the skills that we've learned there. Uh, then we wanna create a new task associated to that opportunity. Uh, there's some base knowledge that we'll need to know there on associating tasks and how that's a little bit different. Uh, we'll set the subject to follow up and then the status to not started. And then the uh, finally, finally the activity date will be three days from today. We want to make sure that that date is ever changing. So we know that today is, what is it, April 24th, right? Uh, but if we create this task for tomorrow, we want it to be based off of the 25th. So that, that time period needs to continue to move forward and how we're going to do that. Uh, we'll take something special inside of Flows. Inside of our demo org here, well, let's check out and see what we're kind of want to do, right? So let's look at the opportunities. I'm going to go to the all list. And instead of sorting by the amount, and this is descending, we actually want to sort ascending. So we want to find the one with the lowest amount, which is actually this Burlington uh, textile weaving. Um, and we can see that this is closed one with a zero amount, which kind of doesn't make sense, but that's okay. Um, and then in here, and maybe this is why we're actually creating this process, right? Uh, if you think about it in a practical sense, maybe so, uh, your sales reps did not close out this opportunity properly. Uh, well, they closed it and they did not update the values or pick products, whatever it is. And this is some automated process that you have in here to um, update this accordingly so somebody gets notified. So now if we're just doing this kind of manually, right, we're gonna go over to the activities tab. We will add in a subject, which was follow up and the due date, which is, I'm gonna hit today and then one, two, three. So this should be about the 27th. And then we can see that this related to value is set uh, inside of here. So that's pretty much all we need, right? To, to, to complete this challenge. The status is already set to not started. So we can go ahead and save this and we can see this follow-up task has been created. So to do this in flow, let's go ahead and go into setup. Start by creating our flow. And for the FlowFest challenges, they're all going to be auto launched depending, you know, if you're doing this in your actual org, then you will create what you need. But I like this to be an auto launch or subflow, uh, particularly in the orgs that I'm working on because I can then keep these modularized and move them around and use them in multiple places. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get our opportunities because we're looking to find our opportunities. So uh, we're get using a get record element and we're gonna say get opportunity. And I'm actually gonna put a uh, description inside of the label itself. And I'm gonna say lowest amount. And we can see here that this auto filled in, just a quick tip, if you delete the API name so you don't have to type it all out, right? You can delete the API name, click back into your label and then click out and we can see that it auto filled in here, which is really nice. Next, we're gonna get our opportunities, and normally you would put conditions, right? So let's let's take a look at our conditions. We were talking about stage name. 
which is related to uh, the, uh, the opportunity stages, right? And based on the challenge, we said our stage name needs to be closed one. Mm -hmm. And this is where all the magic happens with the sorting. We talked about it in the previous uh, video, but we are going to use our sort order and set it to set it by our amount, set it to ascending and then set it by our to by our amount. And what this will do instead of creating some sort of loop that loops over all of the records and then trying to do math to figure out which one's the lowest one, uh, this will give us the them sorted already, very similar to the opportunity list view that we can see here. So it's giving us this sorted. And since we're not using a collection, it's just going to pick the first one that we need, which is which is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking to get this opportunity in here. All right. So now we have gotten the lowest opportunity. And let's go ahead and start to create our follow up task. So very similarly, let's add an element. We're going to create records. Create task from opportunity. And really these dashes and these descriptions, they help when you start to get really big and chunky flows. So they help to keep you organized and understand what values are coming from uh, your different elements in here. So how many rows do are we going to create? We're just going to create one. We, we don't want to create multiples or we're not using a collection at this point. For the setting of the record fields, we do not have a variable resource that already has the values that we need. So in this instance, we are going to just uh, use separate a separate resource, but I'm going to update this in a minute to show you how to use an assignment record in a variable, which will be very handy for the longevity of your flows. Okay, let's come in here and hit task and now scroll down. We can see all the different tasks fields once we click in here. So it said we wanted the status. We want the due date, which is activity uh, activity date. And then we also want the subject. And then finally, we want a way of setting the relationship of the uh, opportunity to the task. So if we look at our original one in here and we go to activities, right, we see we know that they're linked together and we see that there's this related to field. There's not a specific opportunity field on the task record. So let's jump back in here and let's see if we find related to and it's showing this what ID and if some of you aren't familiar with what the what ID is, it is a polymorphic field and all that really means is that since it's a lookup field, it if it's polymorphic, it can be used in uh, it can be assigned to many different objects. Let's take a look at this one really quickly. And I'm going to close this out, right? We see a bunch of opportunities and we can create a new opportunity, but we can also hit this little drop down and see all the other objects. These are completely separate objects that we can assign our task to. So that is what the related to field is. There are not many fields that are like this in Salesforce. You actually, as of recording this, right, this is 2022. Um, we are not able to create fields like this ourselves. Um, there are only specific fields that are able to be assigned to multiple objects. So it's kind of a fun field. Um, so let's start from the top and our status needs to be not started. So let's enter that in our activity date. It needs to be today plus three and we're not, I don't, I don't see anything in here. Uh, let's check this out. So there's original date. I, I don't know if this is going to work, right? That, that doesn't seem about right. Um, we can see that there are some other things, but nothing in here is telling us that, hey, we can actually come in and say today, um, you know, add three days or give us more days kind of thing. Um, so I'll come back to this in a second. We'll, we'll figure out how to get the activity date in here. Subject, uh, fairly straightforward. The subject is not, since it's a pick list uh, value, it's not already showing us. But once again, tasks are kind of an interesting object where you can actually uh, add in um, specific values to a pick list value really quick. Let's jump over here. There's, there's this super interesting field 
um, for subject where you can actually either select from a pick list value or you can type in if one of the values is in here. So check into this. So just some general information for the task object that you needed to know to follow up with this. If you thought it would have, you had to pick like one of the pick list values that is incorrect because it is a text pick list value, which once again, you cannot actually create one of those at, at this point. Okay, let's create, let's set our opportunity and we see our value in here and we're going to use the ID. So we're setting our opportunity ID into our what ID. Now, we can save this, that, that would be great, but we're forgetting one thing, right? So that it is our activity date. How do we, um, how do we get that value that, that we need in here? So to actually do that, we need to create a formula field. There's two ways to do it, right? We can add a new resource in here, drop down, hit our formula field, or we can come in here and uh, hit the new resource button and create our formula field. So I like to start all of my formula fields out with form and then today plus three, right? So anytime that I'm encountering this inside of my flows, I know that it's a formula field um, because it, it starts with form. Now, this, we need to select our data type. We know this is a date field. Uh, next, we need to know, hey, what is the current date? How do, how do I get that? Uh, and for some of you, it may be unknown, but you can use, there are formulas that you can use inside of, um, inside of, a, uh, inside of a, a flow, right? So you can actually use this system origin date time, but we don't actually need the time. So there is a formula uh, called today. And let me see if I can grab them really quick. Salesforce flow formula functions. Okay, and we finally landed on it. Here are all the formula and function operations. And I'm just gonna do a control F and we can see that there is a today value to give you the current date. Um, so let's jump back into our flow. And if you've used this, you know, I'm not focusing on this too much, but you can actually add or remove time uh, to the current date. So plus three will add days to this completely. Uh, so this is exactly what we needed. Let's jump back into the create task and add in our value and boom, here's our formula today plus three. Let's enter that in, hit save. I'm gonna call this opportunity uh, create task on lowest out and once again this is an auto launched using that trick again to set the dates and then if you were doing flow fest right you would come in and add a new element this would be a subflow and that's the subflow to finally submit we don't have that in this org because we're just using this as a demo but let's let's actually test this out I'm going to run this, uh, allow for pauses, run this in debug, and let's see what we get. So let's open our debug up and see what we've got here, right? So it did find a record successfully, and down at the bottom here, we can see that, wow, our date is actually added by three, and that's the power of the formula field. All of these values look good, and uh, since we ran it in rollback, none of this stuff got created, but let's actually check out our uh our opportunity value to see if it grabbed the correct opportunity. And we can see here that it is on our Burlington textile. It's a zero amount one. So all of that looked good. Let's run our, uh, let's debug this again and not run it in rollback. Okay. And then I, before I refresh, we can see that here's the, um, I think this is actually the one that got created, but let's double check, let's refresh activity. And here we go. Uh, this is the one that just got created for us. So um, in terms of FlowFest, we are done, right? We sent our values through, we're on to our next question. Hopefully it gets evaluated properly. Really quickly, before we sign off, I wanna actually convert this 
create record element into using an assignment. So I want to use the variables that are in here. Uh, and there's a few different reasons, but ideally it's for longevity and scalability of your uh, project. You know, we don't just want to create this one time and then leave it alone. We may, maybe we want to send our uh, assignment value around or a task value into different areas, into different subflows. So it can be very useful to do an assignment because you get more control over the values. But all your assignment elements really do is just set values into each other, right? So you maybe you have a variable and you want it to have this value. Very similar to setting these fields here and we'll continue to build on top of this as we move into the next challenges. Now let's create our assignment element. Go in here and I like to call these set task values. If I could type and I'm going to look in here and I don't see anything related to uh, tasks, right? We've got this task ID uh, but that's that's not what we're looking for. So once again, I'm going to create a new resource and I'm going to call this a variable. A variable because I want it to hold values um, like object information or the dates or anything like that. And I don't need it to automatically generate. I will tell it what it needs to be. All right. So we're going to call this var. So very similar to form. We're going to call this var task. And the data type, you can see we've got a ton in here, but we're actually just going to pick record. Call this a task and I'm not going to allow for multiples because that would be a list or a collection where you could set you would have to loop through and set multiple values there all right so now that we have our task variable I'm gonna set all of the same fields that we were talking about before so there was subject there's var uh, the I think it was status and there is, you can see me typing in var, right? So it does that uh, little um, selection or filter down for the different values. Um, and just to go slow, right, we can click into here. Um, and then we need the activity date. You can scroll through it. So very similar. The what ID is our opportunity ID. The status is not started and the subject is follow up, perfect. And now for my create task from opportunity element that we have here, we're no longer gonna be use sep using separate resources. We're gonna use all of our values that we have in here. And lo and behold, we have our var task since it's an object uh, or a record variable that we created, we can, we can use this to uh, actually uh, create and manipulate the values that are in here. Let's go ahead and save. I'm going to debug again. And before we get any further, I want to make sure that we actually see this. I think this completes the task. So I'm actually striking this one out. Um, and now let's go ahead and debug and run this again. We're seeing, okay, wow, we found a record. Here's our assignment. We see all of the fields, which is you know a lot easier to look at, right? Here's here's all of the fields that we have, and then down here we can see that the uh, record, the task record, was created. Let's go onto our page itself. Jump over to activities, and boom, here's the other uh, task that we have created. I think this one. This is you had a task, so this one is incomplete. And then here's our follow-up one. So this is the new one that we got created, which is great. All right, we went over a lot in this, uh, going over assignments, get records, collections a little bit, a little bit on sorting. So thank you all so much for watching. If you learned something new or if you can think of some ways of improving this flow or using it inside of your org, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to uh, continue to build on top of this and to be able to uh, learn from different suggestions that you all have. If this video was helpful, make sure to hit that like button. It appeases the algorithm gods and makes me feel really good. Lastly, make sure to sign up for FlowFest version 2 or whatever version of FlowFest that is going on. Even if you're a novice at Flow just learning, we have problems and challenges for you. And then if you're trying to be that Flow master, we do have more complicated flows that are out there. So continue to check back on the channel so that you can see those. But that's all I have. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate your time. And remember, I believe in you.